analogy because there are there are there there are there are names and lists of demons out there. Yes. Okay. We've never heard of. Correct. But in these books, they're in there. They're present. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, now, now, going going to going to my notes here. Okay. Now, in fourteen, when you go into your your uh, right here, Rodney, the yes. origin of the King James Bible. Mm-hmm. All right. Let, let's go there. Go there, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, the King James Version of the Bible has been around nearly. Four hundred and something. Okay, years. all right, four four centuries, centuries. Mm-hmm. and it is and has been the most widely recognized standard for the Bible translation for the most of, of that period. It is perhaps not surprising that it has been assailed by writers of widely differing views from each other. If one considers it too uh, literally accurate, another will allege that it is not accurate enough. Mm-hmm. One will attack the King James Version uh, reading. Another vouches for the reading, but dismisses ten more <laughs> as translations. <laughs> Often, the statement made to question the KJV are made out of lack of knowledge of the facts, mm-hmm. and that was the most profound statement right there. Right. Okay. Here, I wish to address only one of the many issues that surround the, the King James with a cloud of understanding, uh, w- with a cloud of misunderstanding. That is, many people are quite unaware of the King James version's translations ancestry. Some years ago, I was discussing the Bible with a pastor who disparaged the accuracy of King James Version, but who, as, in ter- as it turned out, was so historically ignorant that he, did, he believed the King James Version to have been translated secondhand from other languages rather than from the Hebrew and Greek. Mm-hmm. And just recently, I discovered a webpage where the author, who was plainly well-informed as to the history of Bible translations, but has perhaps only seen isolated quotes from them in secondary sources, denouncing the fallacy of claiming that the King James Version is merely the completion of William uh, Tinsdale mm-hmm. translation. Uh-huh. He then proceeds a quote uh, to quote a verse, Luke twenty two fifty six, which is indeed very different in Tinsdale from the rendering in the King James Version, but unfortunately is not a very typical example. For brethren such as these, I thought some remarks on English translation of the Bible from Tyndale to King James might be helpful. So here's what he said. He says, although the Bible had been translated into English by John Wycliffe and his followers in the 14th century. Now, not Wycliffe, the the R&B singer. (laughs) Okay. Uh, This version was done from the Latin Vulgate. Mm -hmm. It was a brave effort against a uh, tyrant. Tyrannical tyranny, basically, church, but being a translation of a translation. So King James is a translation mm-hmm. of a translation. Mm-hmm. Its value was not lasting. William T- uh, Tyndale uh, was the first to render scripture into English from the in- from the original Hebrew and Greek texts. He shared his plan to translate the New Testament with Bishop London, hoping to receive assistance and patronage. But, and I quote, un- understood at the last, as he put it, not only that there was no room in my Lord of London's palace to translate the New Testament, but also that there was no place to do it in all England. Tyndale, uh, Tyndale some say Tyndale, I sometimes say Tinsdale. <laughs> okay, and ain't no S no way in there. <laughs> Tyndale therefore worked in exile on the European continent, printing at uh, Worms in, in 1526, and it goes on and on uh, about the translation. The Catholic Church really had issues with men, mm-hmm. you know, who messed with that whole Latin thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, and a lot of times it was bondage because they would they would read only they were, they would have the periodicals only in Latin, and the people could, didn't understand it. Correct. So the priests and the bishops mm-hmm. and the pope. Mm-hmm. You know, they were the power of the church and they were the ones that you can only go to. True. Even though the the veil was written. <laughs> it was written down, but we put the veil back up. And we and we, we do that today. We, it's still because there. we still, we feel like we can't get a prayer through until we call the pastor. We call him. We confess to him. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. And he has become the veil. Yeah, he has. He, yes. he, he the, the veil Crawford. Who? <laughs> the, who is this the veil guy? <laughs> <laughs> Sidney Crawford's uh, cousin. <laughs> Sidney Crawford. <laughs> Lord help him today. Uh so going going to this fourteen, chapter fourteen, 
two, uh, when it says, for no man understands him, how be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of the commentaries, like the pulpit commentary in Geneva, I think it is, says that, well, it, it, you're speaking to yourself. You're speaking to God and yourself and you edifying yourself, but it doesn't necessarily mean it is a heavenly thing that nobody understands but you and God. That, that's one of the commentaries say. I'm going to lean on that mm-hmm. because, again, I'm only seeing one one verse here out of all the other ones that seem like it seems like it's a it's a man tongue. Mm-hmm. OK, that's just me. Um, and I'm known to be wrong. Usually I'm not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, now, we we ended last week and we was we got real deep uh i think rodney can you remember the verse that we ended up right right i think it was 21 maybe where last last night that we were going off the air uh one we did 13 and 8 where it says well there be tongues that shall cease are you talking about that no we 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 talked about that and you you settled that one. Oh, okay okay yeah. uh play the tape go to speaker.com and <laughs> yeah. play the tape. but f- chapter 14 mm-hmm. and i think at 22 okay. is where we had to end. Mm-hmm. Uh, wherefore tongues are... Now, you... you, you, you I, I kind of touched on it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. That they are for a sign for, uh-huh. uh, for unbeliever. Yes. Okay. Not okay. not to them that believe, right. but to them that believe not. Exactly. But prophesying serves not for them that believe. Exactly. Not but for them which believe. Uh, can you break that down? Yeah, well, first of all, I got a question. Why sure. is it that the confusion is on tongues, but it's not on prophecy? <laughs> that's that's the whole purpose of the Sir Walter Jones show. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's the purpose for the song, son. <laughs> Boy, I thought you knew. Yeah. Well, it was his love. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's true. And we alluded to it yesterday when we gave that order of mm-hmm. the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. And tongues were down at the bottom. At the bottom. Next to interpretation of tongues. Exactly. Okay. But, but we highlight that. We always see some commentator. Yeah. Or some person in disbelief. Yeah. Came up with the bright idea, let's mess with tongue. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Now, you have to look at something. It says that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh to God. Right. And when he speaks to God, Paul is saying that your spirit man Mm -hmm. is having a conversation Mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, you do know that it's not your, your body that's saved. Right. It's your spirit that's saved. That's right. So if you're speaking in an unknown tongue, now Paul said he speak more than all of them. He did. Didn't he read that said that? He did. But he implied that he don't do it in church. Right. So my question is, for those that do a lot of tongue talking in church, do you do it at home? <laughs> <laughs> Most likely the answer is no. No, you do because not. Because many they do a tongue to impress people. Yes. And so the church got caught up on Oof. rather than receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, mm-hmm. the church got caught up on I want to hear the tongues. That's true. I remember when the Lord baptized me with the Holy Ghost, I fell at the feet of a person who was supposed to have been a believer. Yeah. And I spoke in tongue, and it was the most awesomest thing that took place mm-hmm. in my life mm-hmm. to know that I'm speaking in tongue and have no control over what's going on. Mm-hmm. It was it was scary to me, mm-hmm. but what was going on on my inside was just awesome. Right. So when I got up and 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 I sat down, I was not going to say nothing, but something led me to go to the mic and proclaim that the Lord had just baptized me. The witness who feet. Then I spoke it when I fell, said I didn't hear him speak. Okay. So that person only wanted, you know how they used to do in the mm-hmm. Old Testament, old days, they take a microphone That's right. and put it to your mouth. They did. Well, they were looking for the tongues. Right. Now, if you really want to know if a person's been saved, look for the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, that's it. Which is a sure sign. We say that the tongue is an initial sign. Uh-huh. But, but Bishop Mason said, don't make me do something that's not scriptural. Yeah. Because the term initial is not in scripture. Right. Though we read a few times when those who were baptized began to speak with tongue. Mm-hmm. But the saints came out with the term initial. Mm-hmm. So now we've been fighting for initial tongue mm-hmm. for the longest. And then the old folks say, if, don't go and buy a pair of tongues. Go mm-hmm. and buy a pair of shoes. <laughs> and the tongues will come with the shoes. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So Paul is really getting that. Uh, uh, prophesying edifies the church. It does. 
All right. Anyone can prophesy providing yeah. that the spirit of yeah. prophecy is mm-hmm. moving upon right. them. That's right. You don't have to be a prophet. Yeah. Now, the Bible said also that uh, 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 the Holy Ghost will show you things mm-hmm. to come. Mm-hmm. Well, what mm-hmm. does a prophet do? Yeah. He tells you, he or she tells you of upcoming things. or forthcoming things. That's true. So he's saying that tongues are for a sign to not to the believer, but to the unbeliever. Mm-hmm. And we read in Acts, the second chapter, mm-hmm. where the believers, the saints that came out the upper room, mm-hmm. when they began to speak in tongue, they spoke in the other language. Right. So the unbeliever heard the believer praising God in their foreign language. They became a believer. That's true. But once you get into the church, I don't need you to speak in tongues for me. Right. I need you to prophesy, which means I need you to speak the word of God. See, yeah. prophesying here is to speak with a a a uh, understandable language, mm-hmm. the mysteries of God, mm-hmm. and that's what calls me to be edified. Now that that's real good. So if a uh, uh, if an unbeliever walk into my church now, which is an all speaking church, yes, all right, mm-hmm. this is according to scripture here. Mm-hmm. If y'all going to speak in tongues, do it right. Correct. All right. Uh, and an unbeliever walk in my church, and then you break out in the tongue. Mm-hmm. What kind of tongue should that be? Well, it depends. If the Spirit of God is moving, mm-hmm. if the Lord moves for an unknown tongue, mm-hmm. then the Spirit of God will move for an interpreter. Okay. So that the church can be edified. Not for well, for that person. For that, you got I, to be very careful with that because we have a right. Now you have to understand. Paul is trying to set order because mm-hmm. if you read further down, he says. Uh, don't stop uh, uh, speaking in the tongue. I think he said that somewhere. We'll no, he said I would do, that you all speak. Right, but yeah. if you if you read further down somewhere, he told them not to stop mm-hmm. uh, uh, the tongue talking. But I, I'll I'll find it mm-hmm. in in its you know clarity so that we can know uh, what I'm trying to say. But go sure. ahead, and I'll try to. Sure. No, uh, my my example is a, a person is unsaved and he walk in the room. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, and and we always. Back then, it wasn't so much church buildings. They didn't have church buildings back correct, then. Correct. They, they were, they were, they, they, they worship under a juniper tree, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or what are you doing under this juniper tree? <laughs> what are you doing under juniper? <laughs> and um, they, or they, or they were persecuted. So a lot of times they went to caves. They allowed, they had services in caves, um, or in homes. Mostly it was homes. Married, married, home, house, Peter's house, whoever's house. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if an unbeliever walk in the room and somebody starts speaking in tongues, the unbeliever is like, what is this? Correct. Okay, so the, that's why Paul said you got, he says, now, <laughs> if you're going to speak, he says, pray for interpretation. Pray for an, and pray that you, you can interpret. interpret, absolutely. Because exactly. you might be the only one. Exactly. And then Bishop Mason, we have, we have mm-hmm. CDs of Bishop Mason praying mm-hmm. in tongue, mm-hmm. but then he interpreted. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've heard the CDs. I've got them in the car. Our uncle, the late John Albert Jones, right. used to pray in tongues, uh-huh. but then he would interpret. Mm-hmm. That's so right. it still does exist, mm-hmm. but we've out of order with everything, not just right. tongues. We're right. out of order with prophecy. Everybody is a prophet right now. Yeah, and that's my problem. I don't believe that the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit ceased. And I know we picked two that said they said that they has ceased, and that's the utterance tongues. Mm-hmm. The one that's uh, speaking tongue and the prophetic. Many denominations says God has ceased that. Right. Okay. And, but they can't show you where He says it. They can't show you where right right ended. And and of course the the, the apostolic ministry, mm-hmm. uh, meaning apostles, that was it. Right. Okay, there are no more apostles. So that's yeah. what a lot of denominations feel. I I don't argue with either or. Mm-hmm. I just don't. I just take care of my business and move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. If you want to call yourself an apostle, or if you've been you've been called that, then then I can't. I, who am I to tell you what you? wasn't called to do exactly it's not my that's not, not my place mm-hmm. just do the work mm-hmm. okay because if you're going to have a title and we're going to talk about it in the next hour the next hour about having a uh, a title mm-hmm. but living according to that title or that name gotcha okay all right we'll call next hour what's in the name mm-hmm. I, I think that's, <laughs> that'd be nice mm-hmm. uh so paul says continue to speak mm-hmm. right just continue to speak but but he's uh, he, he, but he spent more time saying how to do it. How to. He had to and set the, the church in order mm-hmm. because the church is out of order. Yeah. So he had to write to, they was taking communion every day, all day, but they were abusing it. So yeah. he had to write to them because it's it, it's legal yeah. to take communion every single day. It is. That's right. It's, it's legal. Yeah. But Paul had to show them how because how, yeah. they were being uh, g- greedy with yeah. everything. So 
these are ways to cause the church to do everything decent and in order. That's good stuff. Woo! Man, I'm exhausted. Uh, We're going to take a break, right, and go eat something.